I want to talk to you about macros. What they do is they actually speed up how you work. And if you're doing repetitive tasks, it will also allow you to do those repetitive tasks without making mistakes. And if they're repetitive, well, then it's going to speed things up. So I want to show you basically two macros. One that will set up a spreadsheet for you, and you can use it then to save it and print it out and so on. But you'll get the idea that it's remembering everything that you do. The other one is to show you how to import information, then get it to rearrange the information and also perhaps format it as well. So the first one I'm going to do is actually set up a spreadsheet. And we're going to do that by just going into Tools, choosing Macro, and Record New Macro. Now recording the macro is basically going to remember everything you do. So we're going to do that. I'm going to choose Record New Macro, and we get the Record Macro dialog box. You need to give it a name. It's defaulting here to Macro 1. I'm going to give it a name, Set Up spreadsheet. Now you'll notice I put an underscore in there. That's because you can't have any spaces, so an underscore is very good. You might see some people actually name them like this, where they just capitalize the first letter of every word. That's okay. In fact, I'm going to leave it like that. I could put in a shortcut key here as well. So I can just use a shortcut key like you might normally do Control S or Command S if you're using a Mac to save the spreadsheet, or you could use Control B for bolding. And you could do the same to run a macro as well. Now the problem with this is choosing the right letter to use. Now I might want to use S for a setup spreadsheet. However, that's already being used for saving. So the way around this is to actually choose one that hasn't already been allocated. And you're thinking, well, how am I going to remember that? But what I do is I put in a capital letter here which means to run the macro, I have to do Control shift and S, which is the capital S, which will then work. Now, where is it going to put this macro? It has to be stored in a file, and those files are workbooks. So I've got three options here, really. One is the personal macro workbook, and you use that if you want a macro that you want to use, say, on every single, or potentially be available to every spreadsheet that you have. Because the macro has to be open for it to work, and the personal macro workbook opens up in the background so it's always available. So when you do the shortcut key, it's already there. If your macro isn't open in a file, it won't work. So basically, that's a place that you could put it. So let's say you want to open up a particular template just by clicking on a button, then you would probably put that into a personal macro workbook. So it's something that you just want to have always available. Putting it in this workbook means that really you're focused on this macro working only in this workbook, although that's not entirely the case. It could be that you want to create in a new workbook because you actually want to then set up some macros in a new workbook and you're just going to open those up every time you need to use them. It could also be that you want to share them with other people, so you might actually just send them that workbook. For this, I'm just going to choose this workbook. I can put in a description here of which it's automatically defaulted as to who and what date it's being done. But again, you could just change that if you want, or you can add in extra information. So this is to set up a spreadsheet. And I click on OK. And when I do, this is my stop recording toolbar. Here you'll see there's a stop button, so I can stop the macro at any time. And this here is for relative references or for absolutes. I'm just going to look at that in a moment. What I do want to show you, and I'm just going to have to scroll this up, is down at the bottom here in the status bar, which I've just brought up here, it says it's recording. That tells you that it's recording everything you do now, not just generally moving the mouse around, but when I actually click on things. So you need to know that that's running. And it's important to remember to stop running your macro when you're done. So it's always a good idea to do these when you're not too busy or not being distracted because it's very easy to do. And then you keep doing other stuff. Someone could walk in and distract you and it's going to remember all of that. So what is this button here for relative reference? Well, if I click here, it's going to remember that I clicked in A3. And if I type something in, such as I'm going to put in here some sales. So I'm going to put in item, I'm going to put in camera, 
my Mac five pads, notebook, and so on, and I could go down that list. When I run this macro, it's going to remember that actually I typed these items into A4, A5, A6, and A7. Every time I run that macro, it's going to put those into that slot. But what if I just wanted to say put them wherever I started, like if I click here and I want to type something there, and I want it to start from A9 and not from A3. So basically that will define the starting point. Well, that's where the relative reference comes in. And if I click on that, it will now do them relative to where I am. So if I move down two cells, it will remember that I moved down two cells. So that's really important to know because you might just say, right, I'm going to click on that cell there and just put everything in relative to where I've just clicked. Okay, so that is actually important to know. I'm just going to turn that off because we started off doing it the other way. I'm now going to enter in some months here and I can do the autofill and it will remember the autofill and it will remember that I put in a total here as well. And if I put in here as well the auto sum and specify what it is, press enter, copy that down, and I might just put a grand total in down the bottom here, and it will remember that. It will also remember the fact that I'm about to make all of that bold. And that's basically the start of a macro. So that's how it works. So that is doing it with the absolute referencing on, so it's going to put it in exactly where I've clicked here. So don't forget, though, that there is the relative referencing. I'm going to actually record one very quickly after this using relative referencing just so that you can see the difference. So that's a spreadsheet that I've set up. I'm now going to click on Stop. I'm going to put in a new worksheet. In the same workbook, I'm going to do Control, Shift, and S, and you'll see it's instantly filled all of that in. My formulas are here as well, so you can see those over there. So it's immediately set it up. I just need to fill in the blanks here and it will work. Now there is another way. I'm just going to delete all of that. Now there is another way I could run this macro. And you'll see it doesn't matter because I did it absolutely. It will always put everything in the same place each time. So the other way to run a macro is to go into Tools, choose Macro, and there's Macros, and you'll see my macro right here. I can either double click on it or click on run and it will immediately run it. See how quick it is? There's no tricking here. I'm not cutting anything. That's how quick it will do it. It'll remember everything you do, changing column sizes, the whole lot, creating graphs. It really doesn't matter what you do. It will remember it. So I'm just going to create another one. I'm just going to insert another worksheet. I'm going to record another macro. So I'm going to go to Tools, Macro, Record Macro. And I'm going to set up spread sheet relative. Okay, I'm not going to worry about the shortcut keys. I'm going to put it in this workbook. I'm not too worried about anything else here. I really just want to demonstrate this to you. So I'm just going to click on OK. And I mentioned about this relative referencing. So if I click here and I now type in the same again, if I can actually remember what I had. It's not the same order. Let's put in some actual different items so you can see that it's completely different. You know, all very techy stuff here, isn't it? So let's put in a Dell compute, Dell PC, Windows 7. And again, I'm just going to come up to the top here. And you can see I can use either the keyboard or the mouse for, to do any of this. Put in a total. And again, I'm just going to do a quick totaling so if I click in the right place. I'm not going to worry about the grand total, but I'm just going to show you I could just make all of this fit better. Do the same again here. Make that italic. And again, I'm just going to auto fit to make sure it works. So this time I've used relative. Okay, so I'm going to hit stop recording. I'm just going to clear all of that out. I'm going to click here this time. I'm going to go to Tools, Macro, and Macros. 
I'm going to use a relative one this time, and you'll see it's picked up from where I clicked. Okay, so if I click here, go to Tools, Macro, Macros, double click that one again. So it's recognizing relative to where the cell I've selected is to actually start filling in everything from there. Just to see the difference, I'm going to click over here. If we go into Tools, Macro, Macros, and choose this setup spreadsheet, which was absolute, so it always puts it in the same place. Run it, and you see again it has started from A3, even though I'd clicked over here somewhere. So if I click here, choose Tools, Macro, Macros, and Relative, it started here because that's where the cell was. So that is recording macros and using the absolute and relative. And you can see you can put in formulas and all sorts of things. And it's up to you which one you want to use as to whether it's appropriate to use absolute or relative. So that is one type of macro that you can use, but there is another type that I think is also very useful. Let's say I've got some data. I want to import it. It's been put into a text file. I want to bring it in. And that text file has the information, and each bit of information is separated with a comma. It's called comma separated. And I need to import it, and these tend to be very big files. I then need to rearrange it, possibly delete a column, format it a bit, then save it and print it out. The problem with doing this over and over is one, it can be very tiresome, it can take a long time to do, and also if you're moving things around it can lead to making mistakes. So why not get Excel to do it? So all I need to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Tools, Macro, Record New Macro, I'm going to call this one Import Data. I'm not worried about the shortcut keys. I'm going to keep it in this workbook. I'm going to click on OK to start running the macro. I don't need relative referencing on. I want to use absolute for this. I'm going to import a file. I'm just going to go click on Open. It's a text file, so I just need to choose from my drop down here, Text. And you'll see here I've got one called Table DVDs. And I'm just going to click on it, click on Open and it's going to run the import wizard. And the type of file that is is delimited. That means it's got commas in between each one. So that's the one I'm going to use. You can also tell it which row you want to start importing from. And I'm going to start from row one. But quite often, you might have some blank rows at the beginning. This is the file origin, which is MS-DOS. We're going to keep it at that. I'm not really worried about what it's doing. I just want to see what it will do as a macro. So I'm going to click on Next. We know that it's comma separated. I could then do things like move it. So I could insert a column here. Let's just make that a bit smaller. So if I wanted to, I could then cut that, move it over to here. I can then get rid of that column. So you can see that you can do a lot of things here that would normally possibly trip you up. You can then go File, Save As. I'm going to choose to save it as an Excel file, Excel workbook just there. OK, and it's changed it here. I hit Save. And if I wanted to, I could set up my page setup here. I could choose how I wanted to do that, what paper, what printer, and so on. And that would be my macro. And if I hit Stop, I could now just easily run this. I'm just going to insert a new worksheet. I'm going to go to Tools, Macro, Macros, and you'll see it's got one here, Import Data. I hit Run, and you'll see it's done everything that I wanted it to. It's moved things around. I had duration here before. So just see how quickly that is. Now you could record this to open up multiple you could use this to record multiple things, opening up several things that need to be imported. And then you could get it to tidy it all up, save them with particular file names, print them all out. Think about the time you will save and the chances of making mistakes being reduced. So that's a quick look. So that's a look at macros. So that's a quick look at recording macros in Excel. I could then do things like move it so I could insert a column here. Let's just make that a bit smaller. So if I wanted to, I could then cut 
that, move it over to here. I can then get rid of that column. So you can see that you can do a lot of things here that would normally possibly trip you up. You can then go File, Save As. I'm going to choose to save it as an Excel file, Excel workbook just there. Okay, and it's changed it here. I hit save. And if I wanted to, I could set up my page setup here. I could choose how I wanted to do that, what paper, what printer, and so on. And that would be my macro. And if I hit stop, I could now just easily run this. I'm just going to insert a new worksheet. I'm going to go to Tools, Macro, Macros, and you'll see it's got one here, Import Data, and you'll see it's done everything that I wanted it to. It's moved things around. I had duration here before. So just see how quickly that is. You could use this to record multiple things, opening up several things that need to be imported, and then you could get it to tidy it all up, save them with particular file names, print them all out, think about the time you will save and the chances of making mistakes being reduced. So that's a quick look at recording macros in Excel. One thing you might want to do is add a button onto the top here to quickly run a macro and we can do that by customizing our toolbar. Just very quickly I'm going to go into view, toolbars, right down the bottom here unfortunately off the screen it says customize. I then get, I can create a new toolbar, I'm just going to click on that, click on new, I'm going to call it my macros, click on OK. I'm going to go into commands, here is that toolbar that's being created. I'll scroll down here to macros, I'm going to take a custom button, I'm going to drop it on here, I'm just going to move this right up here. I'm going to right click, you'll see I can assign a macro. So there's my macro. I can click on OK. So now when I click on it, it's going to run that. I can choose a different button image. So I can choose something else that might be more appropriate. If I like and you'll see it's changing it up there. I could also right click on it. I can give it a name, which I'm going to call imports data. Rather than having an image, I can choose to have text, so there is my button, or I can have a combination of the two. All of this, just right clicking and choosing it. One thing you do need to remember is to choose this assign macro down the bottom. Sorry, it's just slightly chopped off there. So that is how you record macros and you can create quick buttons. I'm just going to hit close there. I'm going to go to insert. A worksheet, so we've got one. I can actually move my toolbar around. I can just put it here just so that it's out of the way. If I click on import data, look how quickly it did that. That's recording macros in Excel.